G'day everybody. I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm in a great mood. The Victorian government has just said, hey guys, here's a million bucks. I want you to spend it over four years improving streamside vegetation, planting trees and fencing off cattle access to the waterways. This is fantastic news for all Victorian freshwater fishing. Why is it fantastic news and why am I so excited? Stay tuned and I will explain all. Righty oh folks, habitat is everything. Without suitable habitat, there's no point having fish in the water. Riparian vegetation on the banks of the creek or streamside vegetation, which is properly known as riparian or riparian vegetation, is critical to the habitat in the water. It serves so many wonderful purposes. First and foremost, if you plant trees on the bank of the creek, the roots from those trees will grow down and help strengthen the bank and prevent erosion. If you prevent erosion, you prevent siltation. And if you haven't got the siltation, you get deeper pools in the streams. So when you don't have riparian vegetation on the banks of the creeks, the current can come through, wash the edges away, break the dirt right down to a fine sand, and then deposit that on the, on the stream floor. And before you know it, all your holes are silted up. There's no deep pools for the fish to go. The fish swim down into another river or up another creek, and you've got no fish in the stream. So first and foremost, the the trees on the banks of the streams help prevent that siltation and erosion. That's one of many wonderful things that they do. Secondly, a lot of these trees and shrubs and bushes, particularly native trees, are flowering. When the flowers come, so do the insects, the bees, all kinds of insects, and the birds come to eat the bees, and before you know it, you've got a full ecosystem on the sides of the stream. All the insects, whether it's bees, hoverflies, flies, mosquitoes, ants, mayflies, there's so many different things that come and, and hang out around that vegetation. And many of these insects fall into the water, providing food for the fish that are down there in the better improved habitat with the deeper water as a result of the trees. So the trees are giving us better habitat, better water, and they're also now providing food for the system as well. So now we're getting really good habitat. Fencing off the area close to the streams, that is critically important. Cattle do so much damage to stream sides. When cows walk down, they create erosion, they stir up the mud, they send dirty water down the creeks, and they just really mess the sides of streams up. If the sides of these streams are not fenced off, the cattle can go down and chew on your riparian vegetation and chew it down to the ground, and they often do. So it's important to plant the trees on the banks of the creeks and have a fence around it so the cattle can't get to it. No doubt they'll still have little spots where they can get into the creek to get their water, but not everywhere because they're looking after the stream side now. Now, probably the most important part of, of riparian vegetation is the buffer zone. Riparian vegetation or the riparian zone is often referred to as the buffer zone because it is the buffer between the agricultural land and the stream. So what happens, in a lot of cases, farmers will spray, they'll put super on their paddocks, or they'll spray other fertilisers, herbicides, pesticides, and a lot of the residue from those herbicides and all these chemicals, you get a sudden downpour, a lot of it flushes straight into the water and contaminates the water with nasty chemicals, which is really bad for river health. Poor water quality, even though sometimes it may look clear, it may not be chemical free, it may still be contaminated. The riparian vegetation slows down that flow of water. So when you get the heavy rain and the paddocks become nice and wet and soaked, then the water starts flowing down towards the creek. It will usually hit the riparian zone, which is dense under understory of, of grasses and shrubs and stuff, as well as big trees. It will hit that, then it'll slow right down. Instead of just washing off the paddock straight into the creek, it will wash down the paddock, hit the, the riparian zone or the buffer zone. Then it'll slow down and soak into the ground where those trees will absorb a lot of the chemicals out of the water. A lot of the nutrients and stuff that get washed in from the farm herbicides or the farm fertilisers more so, will be absorbed by the riparian zone. And by the time that water passes through the ground, it's quite filtered and much, much better quality when it enters the stream as what it is if it just runs straight off and straight in. So the riparian zone helps buffer the, the runoff so riparian zones are very important in rural areas. They're very important on farmland. They're just very important in general. Now, over the years, as the, the trees in the riparian zone get bigger, some might fall in. The current will hit those ones that have fallen, 
fallen, sorry, you create a backwater, dig out a deep hole, and next thing you know, you've got a nice deep hole with some logs in it, ideal habitat for fish. Now, back in October, in fact, it was October the 3rd, 1993, some parts of northeast Victoria received up to 250 millimetres of rain overnight. Several streams were just absolutely levelled by a flash flood that went through and caused one of our biggest floods in history in 1993. One stream in particular, it was like a giant flowing sand pit. It was just sand and in some places it was 10 metres wide and just a couple of millimetres deep. I went up there to go fishing. I'd fished it right throughout the 80s. It was a great fishing stream. After the 1993 floods, it was denuded of all fish. There was none there. It was just fully silted. And I remember, I clearly remember this one fish that I did find was in a little pool of water about three foot deep. It was sand, it was pure sand, and the current had just created a little bit of a washout. I went back a week later, it hadn't even rained, and that one metre deep sand hole was sort of still there, but it was downstream about 50 metres. <laughs> the actual, the current had just moved the entire pool down. It just wasn't, it wasn't right, it was just terrible. That pretty quickly after that devastating flood, green groups at the time moved in and repaired sides of that stream. They planted riparian vegetation. They even put up artificial fencing and stuff to catch debris as it floated down to, to try and break the current up and cause that swelling effect to dig out some deep holes. But then back then in 1993, environment, looking after the environment wasn't as important as what it is today. And unfortunately, only sections of the stream were done. So now, 23 years on, the sections of the stream that had the riparian vegetation replanted and the artificial fencing and that put in to help catch the debris, now they are fantastic fisheries. And that very creek, the sections that didn't have any riparian vegetation works completed, are still crap to this day. 23 years later, those sections of creek still fish really, really poorly. They're still open. The water bakes in the sun. It leads to evaporation, warmer water, and, and it still has quite a few siltation issues. But up in the sections of the creek where the streamside vegetation was repaired, the fishing is absolutely fantastic. Have a look at this short clip that I'm about to share now. I actually made this clip just as a teaser for my YouTube channel more than anything, just to put on social media. But have a look at it. You'll see a nice trout come out and follow my spinner and it comes out of a deep hole. You can clearly see the artificial fencing on the other side of the creek. You can see branches and debris washed up. You can see that it's deep underneath. You can see that it's shaded from the riparian vegetation that was planted back in 1993. And no doubt there will be bugs and insects and all kinds of macroinvertebrates falling out of those trees into this deep hole. You have a look at this and to, just to get you thinking, this very creek, not even 500 metres downstream of where this fish is, the creek is level. It's flat, it's open and there's not a fish to be seen. But in this section of creek, I probably caught a dozen fish on this day. Have a look at this and you'll see what I mean by improved habitat. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, look at him. Oh, there's a big one following it. How awesome was that, eh? It's hard to cast because it's a lot more overgrown, but if it wasn't overgrown, the fish wouldn't be there. Well, yeah, folks, so there's some of the wonderful positives to improve streamside vegetation. We've got better habitat in the stream, deeper pools, less siltation and less erosion. We've got an increased ecosystems on the side of the creek, meaning more food supplied for the fish that are now living in the better in the, in the better habitat and best of all we've got less pollutants washing into the creek as a result of less rural runoff because of the buffer zone that is created by the riparian vegetation. They are the so many wonderful positives and this is so good for Victorian fishing. The fishing is looking great, the future is looking great for my kids when they get older. I'm just really glad that I live in an era where environmental concern is taken so seriously. Things are looking good folks, watch out for the next few years we're going to see more and more fishing opportunities.